So this riff is actually pretty easy to get your head around straight away and it, and it just sounds great. It's one of my favorites from Page. The frets you're gonna need, second fret of the D, fourth fret of the D, and fifth fret of the D. That's where we're gonna be moving to and we're gonna hit the open A with each one of those notes. So the picking goes down, up, down while you've got your index finger on the second fret. Okay, down, up, down. Then as we put the fourth finger on the, or you can use your third finger, but I use my fourth. Um, as you go to the fourth fret, you're gonna go up, down, up. Okay. So three strokes on each chord. Um, the first one starts on a down, and the second one starts on an up. Okay. As you slide into the five, you're gonna hit a down. Okay. If you wanted, you could use the first, third, and fourth fingers. But with that hand shape being a little bit more open, you're gonna find it hard to do this kind of um, string muting. Which is why I use the first and fourth fingers and just slide up. I'm pretty sure that's the way Jimmy would have done it as well. So after we've hit the fifth fret with the open A, we come back down to the A5 power chord and do a down stroke. Then we take our second finger to the third fret of the low A. I give this a tiny little suggestive bend, okay, tiniest little pull, and then I go back to that A5 power chord and do an upstroke again, okay. That pull just gives it a little bit more character, okay. The down, down, up kind of works for me. I mean, you could probably do them all as downs if you wanted to, but just for the sake of keeping this right hand fluent, I'm going down, down, up. So I'm just gonna play a couple of repeats a little bit slower so you can see how it fits together. So after you've done that A riff four times, you're gonna come up to a D power chord which is on the fifth fret of the A string. Index finger, and then third and fourth fingers on the seventh fret of the D and the G. You'll see me bar that flat all the time with my fourth finger, because that's comfortable for me, but I'm gonna show you with your third and your fourth fingers, okay? So you're gonna play that with a downstroke and let it ring out for a whole bar. Two, three, four, one. When you get to the one from the next bar, you're gonna quickly come in on the offbeat with an upstroke. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, one. After that, you're gonna move down a fret, down stroke, and then down one more fret to a C power chord and do an upstroke. Okay. Two, three, four, one. From there, you're gonna do the same thing up, down, up, frets three, two, one. Okay. Two, three, four, one. You kind of hear the uh, volume of that power chord dip when I get to the, uh, to the C. I just bring my right hand, hand in for a, a split second to dampen it, and then carry on going down. Just gives it a little bit of breathing space, keeps it tidy. And then you go back to your A riff. Every time it does the D power chord riff, you'll always go back to that a riff we did before and you'll always do it twice. If you take that D power chord I showed you a second ago and slide it up two frets, you now have an E power chord. Okay. What you're gonna do again is a downstroke and strum it for almost an entire bar this time, okay? So one, two, three, four, and. Now on that and, you're gonna move your index finger to the 10th fret of the A, 
and you're going to bar all the way across to the B string. Catch those middle four notes, okay? So we could call that um, an F major bar chord, but with the, uh, the G in the bass. And we're just barring it with that index finger, okay? So the way we count it again one more time is E downstroke, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. And you can slide down, because what we're going to do next is hit an F power chord on the first fret of the E string. And we're going to keep that nice and choppy. It's not going to ring out like that. We can use some right hand dampening before we slide it up two frets to a G power chord on the third fret of the E, okay? Same dampening applies. The way that's going to come in, again, is on the offbeat. So if I've gone one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and. So the and after three, and then the and after four for the G. So you could practice going one, two, three, and four, and. One, two, three, and four, and. And then speed it up. And then maybe try from the E going all the way through. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and. So I'm just going to play the D riff for you, A riff twice, and then the E riff a little bit slower um, so you can see how it sits together, okay? kick a wah pedal on or a phaser that's going to give you that um, sort of sound that Jimmy's got going on on the record but in terms of keeping it clear for you guys I'm just doing it with overdrive okay um, so let me show you how I play it and I stress that this is the way I play it okay so I take my third finger to the seventh fret of the G and I have my fourth finger on the eighth fret of the B you're going to hit those notes together at the same time and you're going to bend up the third finger a tone and you're going to do this three times in a row. And on the end of that third one, you're going to give it a little bit of vibrato if you can, okay? Try and keep the note pitched. It can be hard sometimes to um, keep that little finger in place. It's going to want to kind of travel with the third finger. And bring that um, bring that eighth fret out of tune, but if you can, try and keep it in place. Okay, you're going to do that twice in a row. Okay, on the third one, it starts exactly the same. Then we have this little riff after the bends. So. If you've gone up on that final one, you're going to hit the G again, let it down, so it's a pre-bend. Pull it off to the 5, okay, and then hit the 7 on the G again, and do another pull off to the 5. So you're up here, down, pull off, 7 again, pull off. 
hit the 7 on the D, and then the 5 on the G. Okay? You can just practice that by itself. Because it's going to happen again in the other repeats. So that third riff. Okay. The next two repeats, okay, are very, very similar to that, except when we go like that, we're going to do an extra bend up. So you end up bending up four times instead of three, okay? And then you're going to bend down and do that same riff again, okay? So let me give you the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth repeats, okay? Just vibrato. Just vibrato. So that's three pushes up, the little riff, and then for the next two, extra bend up, riff, extra bend up, and then the little riff. So this next little bit goes like this. Really cool riff. You can start with your third finger on the seventh fret of the G, quickly bend it up a tone, okay? Have the first finger go flat across the five on the B and then the E. And we're gonna go down, down, up. Seems to work well for me. That little cool riff is again a seven bending up and down very quickly and then pulling off to the five on the G. Okay. Then I take my third finger and I go seventh fret of the D and I do a quick flat down like that with the third finger and hit the seventh fret of the G as well. And then I go back to the seven on the D. Cool little technique that. You find it in a lot of uh, rock tunes, especially like Zeppelin, ACDC. Okay. It's just a way to quickly get across two strings um, and get no bleed between the notes, like that, but not have to use two fingers, okay? After that, we're gonna hit the five on the G, index finger, and then the seven on the G has this quick little push to it, I can hear. So it's just a straight up bend. And then hit the five on the G, seven on the D, five on the G again. So this next little part looks like this. Third finger on the seventh fret of the D, first finger on the fifth of the G, and then slide up to the 11 on the G with the third finger. You're gonna hit that four times. From there, you're gonna do a pull off from the 11 to the 9, and then slide back to the 7. Okay, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you hit it again for the pull off, and then slide back. Okay, from there, you're going to hit the 9 on the D, 7 on the G, slide back to the 5. My best advice is, is just to take little sections of it and just practice them and then go back to the start of the solo and see how far you can get and just keep adding bits on. It's always worked for me anyway. So.
From there, you're gonna come down to the fifth fret of the D and you're gonna do a really quick pull off to the third fret, third and first fingers. Okay. Then hit the five on the A. So from there, you're gonna hit the three on the D again, five on the A, and then three on the D again. Back and forth. So from here. Then we've got this cool little um, descending pattern again. Five on the D, four, then three. And obviously that's gonna go at the same time as. It's cool because he just stays in the same place here. Next little part. So you're going to slide into the seventh fret of the A with the third finger and then go up to the five on the D, then the six, then the seven. Okay. A little bit like Black Dog. Five on the G. Then we've got a flat bar across the seven on the G and the seven on the D with the third finger. Okay. Index finger back on the G, fret five. Then a quick push on the seventh fret of the G. And then you've got this back and forth little riff, five on the G, seven on the D, five on the G. Okay. After that, you're gonna hit the seventh fret of the D and the fifth fret of the G again really quickly. And then slide up to the nine on the G with the second finger. From there, as in the ninth fret of the G, you're gonna put your first finger flat across the eighth fret of the B and the E. Okay. And then the 10th fret of the B with the third finger. So he's resolved to A again. Okay. From there, you're gonna kind of take that idea of and move it up two frets for this little riff. So that's 11th fret of the G, 10th fret of the B, and 12th fret of the B. So you're gonna push that 12 up for a bend. Again, and one more time. And that time you're gonna bend it up, pull it down, and then off to the 10. Then finish on the 12th fret, the note B, okay? So it's gone like this from here. Let's just recap from the slide into the seventh fret of the A, so it makes sense to you. So this next little bit goes like this. You're gonna slide into the twelfth fret of the A with the third finger. Then go 10, 10 on the D and G with your index finger. Okay. Take the 12th fret of the G with the third finger. Bend it up and then down before hitting the 10 on the G again. From there, I do a finger change here. Rather than hitting the third finger, I go second finger on the 12, 
and slide that up into the 14. And it's not one of those slides where it goes straight in. You like to hear the G slide into the A. Okay. From there, you're going to hit the 13 on the B and then the 15. When you hit that 15, you're going to bend it up straight away. Okay. You don't want to hear it come down, you're just going to kind of stop it whilst it's bent up. Let it down and then do 13, 15, 13 on the B string. Okay. So from here, last little bit. So you're going to start by putting your fourth finger on the 15th fret of the high E string. Then take your third finger to the 15th fret of the B and bend it up and down. It's important that you do a little bit of muting here with the right hand because you don't want them sustaining over each other. You want to hear one, staccato, and then bend the other up and down. Okay? You can even just remove the little finger as well, which will help um, kill that note. So once you've gone E and then the B, you're going to go 13, 15, 13 on the B string. Okay. And then do the same start again, but then 13 on the B this time by itself. Okay. Do the same again. And on this final one, you're going to go 13, 15, 13, and then 14 on the G, which resolves to the A. Okay, so from this 12 on the B, where we did the four bends up, I'll show you how that last bit goes. Okay. 